And you're up, are you ready? Yes, sir, have fun. I'm not gonna go easy. Well, Nathan, Gunner, congratulations, guys. You're moving forward in the third and final round of this competition. You made your first blades out of guillotines, and we're gonna continue on with the darker side of history theme by asking you to build this blade four days. The Executioner's Sword. The Executioner's Sword performed its bloody work in 16th century Central Europe. Unlike combat swords, this lethal blade features a straight, double-edged cutting blade with a blunt tip, perfect for swiftly chopping off the heads of criminals. This deadly weapon was used on many aristocratic felons rather than the ax, since it allowed the victim to meet his end in a dignified kneeling position rather than laying face down with his head on the block. While the executioner's sword fell out of use in the early 18th century, this gruesome sword is still wielded in the 2019 video game, Mordhau. The Blacksmiths, good luck. We will see you in four days. My name is Nathan Anderson from West Valley, Utah. I'm a maintenance worker at the Utah's Hogel Zoo. I love animals, and there's not too many places where I can be welding and look up and see a giraffe right there. If I win Fortune Fire, the $10,000 is going to go to taking my wife on a trip to go looking for Bigfoot. Heat treat coming up. Just don't want to rush it. I don't want to break it. Because that would be bad. All right. I don't think that anything went wrong. I feel pretty good about the quench. Should be able to clean everything up and move on forward from here. So now it's time to start working on the guard. I've got my finials right there. Hopefully those won't add too much weight for what I want to go for, but I think I'm sitting pretty good for right now. There we go. I've got the guard fitting where I want it to. I need the handle comfortable so that there's not a reason to be sent home. As good as it's going to get, and then we'll pin it. So I start engraving skulls and some flames and things like that to kind of make it my own. Pretty close. Let's give it a test. This blade is so good, I can smell Bigfoot now. My name is Gunnar Wilbanks. I'm a high school football coach and teacher, and I'm part-time bladesmith. My wife loves it. Every time I make a knife, I bring it in to her. Both of my daughters and my son, they all have to hold it. As it turns out, we all love blades. A few hours in, and I'm almost halfway there. Kind of forgot what it was like in the little man's world just working with a hammer, because I don't have the power tools. I'm having trouble getting it heated evenly because my forge is short. Every time I slide my blade through, it's so long it wants to droop on one end. Well, every time that I'm getting down here and getting the back end of it hot, the front end of it's cooling off. We got to get the timing right right here. I get it in the quench tank. Uh, I don't feel any tings. I don't feel any cracks, anything like that. That's not a sound you want to hear. It's soft on both ends. That's not going to work. Plan B is to go in for a second quench. And instead of laying the blade flat, I'll lay it upright. Maybe I'll be able to hold the heat a little bit better that way, and the blade's not going to sag on me. If the quench doesn't go well, I go all the way back and start at ground zero. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm elated that I'm actually going to be able to use this blade. It seems to be going great. All right, so far, so good. And hopefully, God willing, and the creek don't rise, they might say you're the Forge and Fire champion. It will kill. Basements, welcome to the kill test. The executioner's sword. That word alone just gives you visions of decapitated heads. <laughs> so to find out what kind of lethal damage your executioner's sword can do, I'll deliver some well, lethal blows on this ballistic dummy. Nathan, is it time? It's time, have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little off the top. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Nathan. First up, this is a heavy beast. It is so forward heavy that you need two hands to control that. Now, your handle construction is smooth. I'll give you that. But 
It also feels a little bit rounded over here where it actually gives me much more control sideways than it does this way. But overall, your weapon, sir, it will kill. <laughs> awesome. All right, Gunner, your turn. So you ready? <laughs> Absolutely. Let's do this. Right, Gunner, let's talk about your executioner's sword over here. Your blade right here has a finer grind, so it makes it a little bit lighter. And the edge that you have here, when it came to that skull, just glided into that. Overall, sir, your executioner's sword, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, the skull and bone chop. Now, to test the overall construction of your blades, as well as how they feel while they're being used, I'll be chopping into these skulls and that nasty giraffe bone. Nathan, you're up. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Have fun. Nathan, so right off, man, this thing is heavy. Once you get it moving, it's going, but controlling it's tough. Having said that, your edge held it beautifully. It's still just as sharp as when I started, which is pretty darn sharp. So good job on that. Thanks. I like sharp things. Gunner, ready? What if I said no? <laughs> I'd say, <laughs> you <laughs> exactly. don't watch the show much, do you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so gonna right off, lighter blade, easier to control. A lot of that has to do with the fact that you've got more handle here. Now your blade, it's got some compacting on the edges, but I wouldn't run my finger down this edge. It's still plenty sharp. Nicely done. Thank you, sir. All right, bladesmiths. This is the sharpest test, the jackfruit and water jug slice. Nathan, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Have fun. All right, let's do this. Nathan, as far as the downward chop, it's a very clean cut, easy, no resistance whatsoever. Now, when I was cutting, as soon as I met the resistance of the water, it kind of rolled on my hand. But anything that it did have contact with, it was able to cut. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thank you. All right, Gunner, your turn. So you ready? Yes, sir, I am. Let's do this. Gunner, the handle construction you have here is wide and ovoid enough to where when I hold onto it, I can really tell where the edge is, and it's much easier to control a blade like this. In the slice, you can see that cuts nicely. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Thank you. Well, Bladesmiths, only one of you can leave here with the title of Fortune Fire Champion and get that check for $10,000. Now, the judges discussed your blades, and they made a final decision. Today's Forge and Fire champion is... Gunner, congratulations. Now, Nathan, you fought hard, man, but unfortunately, your blade didn't make the cut. I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the Forge floor. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks, bud. Well, I'm gonna have to find a different way to take my wife to go see Bigfoot, but we're still gonna go. <laughs> well, Gunner, that makes you the Forge and Fire champion. You just got yourself a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. 
I just won Forge to Fire. Feeling good? I, I mean, I, I never thought I would make it this far from day one. I don't necessarily think that I'm a better Smith than any of these other guys. It just worked out in my favor today. Uh, as far as the money, uh, after football season ends, my wife and I will probably take a long weekend somewhere. Ryan, Matt, gentlemen, congratulations. The two of you have made it past the first forging round in our best in the masses competition, which means that the two of you are going back to battle it out from your home forges for four days. Now, Ryan, because you impressed the judges most in the first round with your blade, you get the choice of one of these three blades to build against your competitor here. Now, we've got the hook sword, the killage, and finally, the panabas. What are you thinking? Let's go with the killage. The killage, all right. The killage traces its origins back to the 15th century Ottoman Empire. This lightweight, sharp, curved blade was specifically designed to be wielded single-handedly, making it ideal for warriors on horseback to deliver deadly slashes upon enemy attackers. This formidable weapon was previously featured on season five of Forged in Fire, where both smiths overcame complications with the length of the blade and the ornate longer. But ultimately, an extreme bend taken during the strength test cost one smith the competition. Good luck. We will see you in four days. Good luck. Hey, good luck, man. I'm Ryan Searles. I'm a 20-year-old artist and bladesmith from Thornton, Colorado. I've always loved to craft and build things with my hands. And when I found out I could play with fire and hammer steel, I mean, <laughs> come on, what's not cooler than that? I want to shoot for a braided mosaic Damascus. Woo! I'm going to stack up a billet of about 28 layers forge it out, chop it into tiles, and I'm able to create a braided mosaic. I got this sword forged out to where I want it to be, and I'm ready to go for the heat treat. All righty. If I don't get this blade hard, I could be out on this. Oh, yeah, we got warp. There's a slight warp to the right, so I know I got to put it between two two by fours and clamp it up. Otherwise, if I can't get that warp out now, it's going to bite me in the butt later. Woo! That's pretty straight. I want to fit the longes and handle together. I, it has to be inlaid just so I can get a very tight and nice fit up. So it's time to get the blade into the acid and see this pattern pop. All right, moment of truth. Woo, look at that. Woo yeah. We got a killage. I brought my A game. Can't wait to see what Matt does and can't wait to hopefully get that 10K. There we go. My name is Matt Roberts. I'm 41 years old, and I've been making knives for about 20 years now. I've been practicing law now for about 14 years. My goal is to win the competition so I can have the bragging rights and, frankly, be insufferable to my friends more so than I am already. I'm forging a coarse ladder pattern in this blade. The hardest part of this build is going to be forging the Damascus and making sure I have a very solid billet. This far into the process, if the blade fails, making another blade in the time remaining is frankly impossible. Yeah, we're good. I want to have more mass in the handle. I also want to be able to have a bigger, more contoured handle that would be more comfortable to the user. I have the handle rough shaped. There's some gapping between the handle and the guard. Try to fill these the best I can. I don't think any of the flaws are going to affect its functionality. They're just cosmetic and they're ugly. Got the handle done. That doesn't look half bad. I think overall it came out OK. I'll be looking forward to seeing the sword used. I think that'll be fun. Bladesmiths, welcome to our dynamic keel test. Ryan, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's, let's do it.
right, Ryan, let's talk about the Achilles sword here. First up, I appreciate the beauty of the Damascus pattern you have there. Also, what I like about this is that it's got that classic Killich look where you got parallel lines and it slowly curve up. That's what we like with a historical piece like this. Now your handle construction, everything is smooth, no sharp corners on that. Your edge is sharp. It almost got through all the way on the pig carcass and the, the Tommy mats. Overall, your weapon, it will kill. Awesome. Matt, your turn, you ready? I'm ready. All right, Matt, let's talk about your killage. It's not quite the historic accurate killage because you don't have those parallel lines. It immediately goes down into a curve. Your handle construction is also not the typical killage look, but your edge is razor sharp. You've got a very nice balance to wield this weapon, and overall, your killage will kill. Thank you very much. Bladesmiths, welcome to our dynamic strength and cutting test. I'm going to attempt to cut through these vines and smash these skulls. I'm not gonna go easy. I'm gonna have fun with these. And Ryan, you're up first, you ready to go? Let's break some skulls. Nice job, Ryan. Your edge is still very, very sharp. Sweet. No glinting or anything. Uh, cut beautifully and overall tested very well. Good job. Awesome, thank you. All right, Matt. It's always more fun for the second guy, right? I'm ready. Well, I'm ready too, let's go. <laughs> All right, Matt, nice job. Thank you. I like the blade, I like the weight. The Damascus came out beautifully. You have the slightest bits of glinting. I mean, it's very minimal. Your handle, a little unorthodox, and right in this area, I wish it had rounded off a little bit more. Right. Because it's a little bit sharp right where my thumb sits on this part, but nothing's loose. Nice job. Thank you very much. Well, gentlemen, you gave us two swords that performed outstanding in our tests. But at the end of the day, only one of you can leave here as a Fortune 5 champion, getting a check for $10,000. After discussion, our judges did make a final decision. Today's Fortune 5 champion is... Ryan, congratulations. Matt, you missed out by just a little bit, and Jay's gonna tell you why. Matt, you brought us a great sword and a great performer. You should be very proud of what you did but you did have a little bit of glinting on the skulls during the strength test, and the handle, it's got some hot spots, and I could feel them when I'm swinging it. Big thing, though, is the historical accuracy. What you brought us is a little bit off from the traditional killage, and that's why we're sending you home. I understand. Well, Matt, you brought us a beautiful blade that did perform extremely well, but unfortunately, your time in this competition has ended. I'm gonna have to ask you to please step off the fourth floor. Congratulations, man. Great job. Thanks, man. The whole thing, it was fun. It was exciting, it was challenging. It was everything I was looking for. Well, Ryan, congratulations. That makes you a Fortune Fire champion. You'll be receiving a check for $10,000, man. Congratulations. Thank you. Forged in Fire champion? What? Oh, man, it feels good. I mean, Matt was an insane competitor. It feels good to make it through all the tests, and uh, the 10 grand, hey, that's just a plus to me.
Jordan, Jesse, congratulations. It is now between the two of you to figure out who's going home with the title of Forge of Fire champion and a check for $10,000. Now, in the final round of competition, you guys are going back home to work on an iconic weapon from history. And that weapon is... The Headhunter's Axe. The Headhunter Axe is both a tool and a weapon of the native Igorot tribe who hail from the mountains of the Philippines. Featuring a sharp spike on one side that is used to pierce shields and armor, it also contained a wide lethal axe head on the other side designed to swiftly decapitate enemies in the heat of battle. An intimidating weapon, tribes would display the heads of their victims to strike fear into their enemies. The legacy of this deadly axe lives on today and can be seen in the video game State of Decay, Breakdown. So good luck, we will see you in three days. Good luck, man. We're back day one at my home forge here in San Ynez, California. I'm gonna be making a headhunter's ax. So we're getting close to forge welding temperature, uh, but this is definitely a pivotal moment to know that my forge welds are set and they're really nice, and it's a homogenous piece of steel all the way through. So this has gotta be perfect right now. I'm really excited to see that it actually forge welded. Today, the biggest hurdle is gonna be that heat treat. It's a weird shape. Let's hope everything goes well. That thing just doesn't fit in there very well. This is a little nerve wracking, making sure that it is perfectly heated across the board. There we go. We got a definite warp right there. I need to run into my straightening jig, straighten it, and let it sit and wait. Oh man, it's perfectly straight. Yes! Only one day left. We're gonna try and get some pins through here to make sure that not only we have a chemical connection to the blade, but we have a mechanical connection. We're through! <sighs> now I'm gonna get everything pretty much to final finish. That is looking mean. Yeah, she's sharp. <laughs> I'm back at my home forge here in Medford, Oregon. I don't really have any time to make mistakes. Kind of my strategy is to draw out the spike in first. That's going to be the hardest and longest thing to draw out. So I get done forging, and now it's time for the quench. And uh, I'm feeling pretty nervous. I feel like my guts are in my throat. Oh, yeah. We did it! It's hard! We're sitting pretty good for day two. I'm getting all the final touches on the axe head. I really want to make sure that I get this axe nice and sharp. I opened up a seam where my weld had met the actual socket. If I weld on this for too long, then it's going to ruin my heat treat. I think we got it. The bladesmithing gods have looked out for me. The gap is gone. So relieved right now. I was doing a little bit of research on the warriors of this tribe, and I noticed that there's certain tattoos that they give warriors after they behead somebody. So I'm going to incorporate some of those designs into the handle. That way, it'll give some good traction, but also look badass. Nice thick coat on there. It's looking really nice. But I really want to see if my edge geometry is there. So I decided to do a cut test. <laughs> oh, I feel so much better. <laughs> On round two of my knife, it did not cut very well. So to know that I'm actually able to make something that can cut and do it well, it, it feels really good. I'd say it's a pass in my book. Gentlemen, welcome back to the forge. Both your blades look absolutely deadly, but there's really only one way we can find out if they are as deadly as they look. We've got a strength test, a sharpness test, and up first, the kill. Blazemits, welcome to the keel test. The Igorot Headhunter's Axe, a weapon that I've always fantasized about because it's very close to my Filipino heritage. To find out what kind of lethal damage your Headhunter's Axe will do, I will take your weapon and deliver some lethal blows on this ballistics dummy. Jordan, are you ready? Because I am. So <laughs> let's do this. Right now, I'm pretty intimidated. <laughs> If that spike hits the backbone or the skull or anything like that, I think it'd snap right off.
right, Jordan, let's talk about your headhunter's axe here. Your edges here are very sharp. With every strike, it dug in very deep into this ballistics dummy. The spike you have here, even digging into the skull, did not bend. It feels good in the hand, and more importantly, sir, it will heal. Thank you. All right, Jesse, you're up next. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. I'm feeling nervous. I'm worried about my ax head flying off the socket, because those bones are dense. You know, going into a human skull is not an easy task. He headbutted me. <laughs> All right, Jesse, let's talk about your headhunter's axe over here. First up, the handle construction. Somebody did some research in some Polynesian tattoos there. Looks good, and it feels good in the hand. Your edges here penetrated very deep into this ballistics dummy. Now, your spike here, not only did it penetrate the skull, but it also cut it, and it stayed true. Overall, sir, your headhunter's axe Little kill. Thanks, Doug. All right, gentlemen, welcome to our strength test, the bamboo and skull chop. Now you get two totally different materials here. You got the springy bamboo that likes to bounce things back, and the skulls that like to break edges. So we're going to test both ends and the overall construction of your headhunter's axes. During your smile, you're up first. How about that? <laughs> yes, sir. OK, let's do it. Jordan, nice job. Take a breath now. Okay. <laughs> now everything held up nicely. Everything's tight, doesn't look like anything moved. Your edges are still sharp. I mean, the fact that you made this thing light, tough, and in Damascus in three days, that's a heck of a feat. Good job. Thank you. All right, Jesse, how you feel after seeing that? Not good. <laughs> Not good? It'll be fine, don't worry okay. about it. one man. All right, Jesse, on the plus side, it felt great in the hand, and your edges held up just fine. But just all the shock wave from the force of those strikes split the handle almost in half. So definitely not going to be able to continue testing with this weapon. Well, Jesse, we absolutely hate to see that happen. Phenomenal job on your blade itself. But unfortunately, you had a catastrophic failure when your handle broke. And for that reason, we can no longer continue testing your weapon. I'm going to have to ask you to please leave the forge. I felt a little heartbroken seeing something that I put so much work into would be broke. But I came onto this competition just to prove that I can compete with some of the best bladesmiths out there. And I know I've already accomplished that. So I still feel like I'm going home a winner. Well, Jordan, you survived the test. Your blade came out on top, so congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and there's a $10,000 check waiting for you outside that door. Very well done. <laughs> I just won Forge and Fire. I don't really know what to say right now. Sasquatch is kind of my mascot, and so I feel like that's a Sasquatch-worthy ax. John, Mike, congratulations. You've both made it into the final round of this competition. Now we're sending you back to your home forges to recreate an iconic weapon from history. That weapon is the 
Bardiche. Sweet. Vicious and menacing, the Bardiche was a favorite of Eastern European infantry soldiers during the 16th and 17th centuries. Its large crescent-shaped axe head measured nearly two feet at the edge and could cleave through flesh and bone. Specialized soldiers called streltsy would use the Bardiche's pole to balance their muskets for firing from a distance, then switch to their axe during melee combat. Though rare in American pop culture, you can experience the Bardiche's savagery on the virtual battlefield in the game Chivalry Medieval Warfare. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We'll see you in five days. All right, let's do this. Day one, my name is Michael Peterson. I've been picking up a hammer before I could even ride a bike, learning and just going out there after my dad would get done forging and just tinker around smashing hammers. 23 years later, I'm still making blades. Oh yeah, now we got a good fire. I use a Coke Ford because it's what I grew up on. I'm using 5160. There we go. Ah, oh, it's a beautiful sound, ain't it? Move on to the handle. I'm gonna start shaping down here, leave less here. Turn on the grinder, got a belt on there. As soon as it gets going, yeah! It snaps, hits me right in the chest. Ouch. These holes in the Bardiche blade make the blade a little lighter. Okay. I got all the holes drilled all the way through. Yeah, looks pretty cool, I think. I'm feeling a little nervous about the heat treat. All right, the moment of truth. Lord, let this go well. I'm edge quetching, hoping for a hard edge and a soft spine therefore reinforcing the blade. Here we go. Foul test. Oh yeah, we got her. Yeah! Everything's ready to put together. I have a little concern about the weight. Just a lot. Like that. A little bit front heavy does bother me a little, but at this point, not much I can do about it. My name is John Wager. I'm 28 years old. One of the things I'm actually known for is I shave stuff into my chest. It's one time I won a sweater contest by shaving a Christmas tree into my chest. So I thought, eh, why not win $10,000 shaving an anvil into my chest? I'm gonna try to just focus on the blade because this is the most important part of my build. I have to get the uh, blade heat treated. I don't got a quench tank big enough, so I had to fabricate a quench tank. So I'm gonna see if it holds liquid, so I know if I can fill it with my oil. Got some leaks. I might put some plastic in it and uh, maybe line it with tin foil to try to keep the heat away from the plastic. You may be wondering what's gonna happen when the oil gets hot inside there, and I may be wondering the same thing. Now I'm going to stick my blade in the forge and normalize it a few times, and then I'm going to go in for my heat treat. I just hope this thing holds up. I'm more worried about glistening for cracks or anything than I am about burning my shop down at the moment. Then my oil starts leaking out. Lose all my oil. So I decided to take the blade out, but I think I got a hard blade. So today, I'll get to start on all the little detail work on the blade. I'm gonna try to incorporate maybe like a dragon type thing on one side and maybe a bunch of uh, just design on the other. So then I'll put that in acid. And it'll eat away everywhere beside the paint. And then after that, I'll wipe off all the paint and you should get a nice shiny uh, finish to, from where the paint was and then kind of a rustic patinaed look on the rest of the blade. So it's just one big piece of art as well as a weapon. All right, Bladesmiths, this is the keel test. We'll find out how lethal your weapon is. I will take your bardiche and deliver lethal chops on this big carcass. John, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do this. <laughs> Head on, brother. All right, John, let's talk about your bardiche here. I love the swells. By putting these welds right there, it allows me to adjust my hand and get a good grip every time I move it around. Your blade right here is razor sharp. Cuts through spine, bones, and thick flesh. Overall, sir, your bardiche will kill. I got something to show you. Oh, sure. Kill test. 
Oh, it will kill. <laughs> Good it. job. I'm glad I was hoping it would kill because I didn't do that. I did that. And, uh... well, good job. All right, Michael, your turn. You got anything to show me? No. Nope. All right. You ready for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. <laughs> All right, Michael, this is at least around 11 pounds, all forward weight. I waste so much energy in recoiling that could be used in attack. But overall, sir, your badish will kill. Yeah! <laughs> oh. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. The stump thump and steer smash. To test the strength and durability of your bardishes, as well as their overall construction, I'll be chopping mercilessly into these logs and cleaving that steer skull in half. Remember, this is all about what happens to your bardish and not what happens to the wooden bone. John, you're up first. You ready? Let's do it. Well, John, Ooh. your uh, bardiche, it's got a nice weight to it. Not a huge fan of these undulations in the handle because I want to be able to move my hands around. I'm looking at the edge. It held up beautifully. Everything's still straight and tight. Good job. Thank you. Michael, you're up next. Uh, you ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hope you ate your Wheaties. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, boy. things first this thing is heavy it's a beast but uh, everything is still tight there's no motion in it even after all of that chopping and, and smashing of skulls the edge held up really well so well done that's awesome yeah up next is the sharpness test and for that I give you to Dave all right gentlemen now unlike the strength test this is all about what your blades do to the target so take one shot right down the middle trying to split those watermelon put half in one bucket half in the other all right, John, are you ready? Let's do it. OK. Nice. <laughs> All right, John, it feels good. It's got a good balance to it. The shape of this is really nice, the cutting edge, curved like that, cut through the watermelon beautifully. Sharp weapon. It's nice Thank and you. done. Thanks. All right, Michael, you're up. Are you ready? Bring out the beast. OK. <laughs> Well, right off, it's definitely sharp, but it weighs a ton. I like the design of this, but build strong doesn't necessarily mean build heavy. John, Mike, you bladesmiths have engaged in one of our most difficult competitions. However, only one of you can be the Forest Fire champion, and that champion is... John, congratulations. Thank You're you. our new Forged of Fire champion. Mike, unfortunately, your weapon didn't make the cut. Please surrender your weapon. My experience here was definitely a challenge. It pushed me to my limits. I learned a lot. I might not be the Forged of Fire champion, but I still feel like I'm walking away a winner. John, congratulations. You're the new Forged of Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for how much? And Graham, please present your bardiche to the judges. This is the most mentally, physically, emotionally stressful time, but also the best time of my life. Woo! Fortune Fire Champion. I'm super excited to get home and tell my wife about the great news. And now, next thing coming up, I'm going to be having a baby boy. So 
Uh, I mean, this is a wonderful year, thank God. Well, Greg, Eric, gentlemen, congratulations. You're moving forward in the third and final round of this competition. You get four days at your home forges to build another iconic weapon from the Wild West. Gentlemen, we want you to build this. This is the Vaquero Machete. The Vaquero Machete became widely popular with the original cowboys of the Southwest during the 20th century. Featuring a thin, slightly curved blade, the weapon was much lighter and easier to carry than the larger machetes previously used by the cowboys, making it ideal to deliver damaging slashes and chops on everything from brush to enemies on the great frontier. The rich history and culture of the cowboys who carried this weapon can be found on display at the Bullock Museum in Austin, Texas. So good luck. We will see you in four days. My name is Gregory McClure. I am 50 years old. I am from Tacoma, Oklahoma. Knife making has always been a deep-seated passion. My grandfather pulled me in when I was 10 years old. We found a piece of metal alongside the road, and ever since then, I started making custom knives. All right, she is cooking. Woo, like a June bride. OK. <laughs> Straight blade. Everything's coming out nicely. It's like it's supposed to. The gas foundry is what I'm going to be making the guard and the pommel out of. You carve the exact thing you want to cast out of foam. This is what it will look like when we get done. Then you pack it in green sand. Here we go. You ready? And as you pour the molten metal on it, it evaporates the foam and leaves you with the shape that you desired. That was good, guys. That's exciting. After a little bit of sanding, it looked great. The one thing you need to worry about with this kind of handle is not getting your pieces glued well enough. My competition's going to be good, but at the end of the day, he's going to bring his best. I brought my best. We'll see what happens. I think that'll work. My name is Eric Finch, I'm 20 years old, I'm from Harmony, Pennsylvania, and I've been bladesmithing for almost three years. When I first got into bladesmithing, I didn't have a lot of money, and my Uncle Chuck, he was super supportive. He got me my first anvil. He really had a lot of faith in me getting into this, and so being here, it feels like it's uh, finally rewarding him for what he's done for me. My game plan is to start with Damascus. I'm gonna start out with 20 pieces, shooting for a 60 to 70 layer in the end. So I got my billet welded up and in the forge last night, got it quenched and in the temper for today. Thinking about starting working on the pommel. When I knew my dad and my brother were out hunting with the hawks, I had them stop over so that I could get a nice look at a 3D bird. My dad's been a falconer since before I was born, so I've always had hawks my entire life. It's very lucky that I'm able to incorporate this because that way I can do a direct comparison. I'm getting ready to go into gluing the handle. And then once I get all the cleanup finished, pretty much all I have to do is add an edge and it'll be done. And I'm really proud of how this looks. Howdy, partners. Welcome to the kill test. Your vaquero machetes look beautiful, but how lethal are they? To find that out, I'm gonna take your machetes and deliver some lethal blows on this big carcass. Greg, you feel lucky? Oh, very lucky. All right, let's do this. All right, Greg. The leather wrapping that you have here is nice and smooth. The handle is ovoid. The one thing though, that's just a lot of handle. And because you have a smooth handle right here, a couple of times my hand just slid down. But your edges are sharp. Those are razor sharp cuts. Overall, sir, you look cute. Mm, thank you, Doug. Eric, your turn, are you ready? 
Let's do it. Let's do this. Good job, buddy. Thanks, it. All right, Eric, let's talk about your Vaquero Machete here. What I like about it is that it just fits my hand perfectly, so it's locked in there. Now your edge, that's a chevron right there all the way up. Those are very sharp, deep cuts, even on thrusting. Overall, sir, you will kill. Good to hear. <laughs> all of Vaqueros, welcome to our strength test, the fence board and skull chop. Ah! All right, Greg, you're up first, you ready? Yes, sir. So Greg, right off, blade held up beautifully. This thing is just as sharp as when I started. Feels like a great fighter to me. Only complaint I have is that long handle. But other than that, the artistry is really well done. That's a joy to use. Nicely done. Thank you. Eric, you ready? Let's do it. All right. All right, so first off, Eric, very different grind on this edge with that secondary bevel, but it's wicked sharp, and it's still sharp. Held up fine. Didn't lose any blade at all. No rolls, no chips, nothing. It's still as straight as when I started. Good job. Awesome, thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to the sharpness test, the gunslinger slice. Greg, you're up first. You ready for this? Absolutely. All right, giddy up. All right, Greg, nicely done. Those are very sharp, clean cuts on, I'd say, at least three layers of clothing. Your weapon, it will cut. Thank you. Eric, your turn, sir. Ready? Let's do it. Let's do this. All right, Eric, the edges are sharp enough to cut through all layers and expose some of the blood. Overall, sir, your weapon, you'll cut. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, well, I gotta say, both of you impressed us from the very beginning of this competition. The first two rounds, you guys crushed it. But in this competition, as you know, only one of you can leave here as a Forge of Fire champion and receive that check for $10,000. The Forge of Fire champion is... Eric. Congratulations, you did it. Well, Greg, I hope you had as much fun working here as we had watching you. That is an unbelievably stunning piece, but unfortunately, your time in this competition has ended. I want to say thank you for coming, but at this point in time, I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the porch floor. Thank you. Take care, I have no shame coming in second to this young man. The check would have been nice, the title would have been nicer, but remember, I'm still the fastest blade in the West. Well, Eric, you are the Forge of Fire champion, and you're receiving a check for $10,000. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> how are you feeling? Crazy. Never thought I'd be here at this young. I don't even know how to react. It feels surreal. 
From start to finish, it's been a crazy, crazy competition. And my uncle, he was probably my biggest driver to win it. Uncle Chuck, this was for you. 